Welcome to the Insurance Agent Podcast. I'm Cody Askins with Secure Agent Mentor. We've started this new podcast to provide you everything you need to become a successful insurance agent. This new podcast is brought to you by Secure Agent Mentor. And when you think about leads, training, and insurance sales success, I want you to think Secure Agent Mentor and secureagentmentor.com. Thanks and enjoy. What's up, guys? Hey, welcome. I'm Cody with Secure Agent Mentor. I get to welcome. We are, we're starting a new podcast series where we're going to go about 10 minutes grilling and interviewing successful insurance agents. What they've done, what's been unique about them, what has taken their game to the next level. I've got Mr. Thomas Dixon. Welcome, buddy. What's going on, Cody? Thank Good you to be here. Mr. Thomas Dixon is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He is a part of the Acadian Insurance Group. And so I want to dive right in. You started about July of 17, am I right? That's correct. That's awesome, buddy, because what's cool is, as we know, about 92% of insurance agents fail in their first few years. You've been in the business, you've been in the business about seven, what, eight, eight, eight months? months? Yeah, about seven, eight, eight months. months. So, and, and I, the reason reason we found each other is you follow all of our stuff, but also I we became friends on Facebook, and I noticed right. a lot of the things you're doing. And I think we get on here a lot and talk about you know leads and door knocking and what and call right. setting and what agents can do to get in front of prospects. You've done it a little differently, which is the purpose of this video podcast series is to do things a little different, focus on unique ways to get in front of people. So. What do you feel like has been the last eight months? What's, what would you say has been your singular focus? My singular focus has been my warm market and particularly my circle on Facebook. That's been my biggest source of um, clients since I started out. Awesome. Thank you, buddy. That's something I've noticed, too, is when I'm putting up videos to attract agents, Mr. Dixon's putting up videos focused at actually prospect customers and clients. So, a lot there, and, and you know what? A lot of agents they, they do it old school. They use direct mail. They door knock. They call, and those ways still work today. I'm not here to say they don't. Still yeah, work. but you've done something a little unique, which is put it on your warm market, your 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 friends, your family, your you know your your uh, getting referrals. What's some of the things that you've done through social media to make sales? Um. The biggest one outside of the videos is Facebook inbox. I go to all my friends and I have either a canned message or I have an image that I have created on Canvas saying, hey, this is my name is Thomas, just let you know who I am. I sell life insurance, you know anybody need a policy. I have a little spiel and I inbox them. I inbox 10 people and about two will say, hey, I don't need nothing right now. One may say, you know what? I need something from my mom. Let's, when can we talk? Cost you about three or four seconds to do it. Wow, that is awesome, buddy. Thanks for, you know what, dude, I'm getting excited. I'm getting goosebumps because, because that's something I have never, I've never heard that, that an agent is going and, and faith, having canned responses and Facebook inboxing their friends and actually trying to grow their business. And so, and, and I think that's one of the reasons a lot of agents fail is that it's, it's the creativity aspect. It's yes. finding creative ways to get in front of people. What else has been, I know you do some Facebook live videos just to get attention. I do Facebook live videos and I do them very topical, like we're in the insurance industry, so we take things for granted, like underwriting and medications, but people that's in not in the industry, they don't know those things. So I do little small videos about diabetes or what to do if you get prescribed this, stuff they didn't know. Oh, I did one other day about driver's license. What if my son doesn't have a driver's license? Ah. So what do I do? So I do those type of videos. I like that. More, more informational, less of a sales pitch and more informational trying to get attention. And I'm assuming when they think, they may think about insurance then, but I also know that if they think about insurance later, I, I, has that happened? Yes. I've had people come back a month or two later. Hey, I saw your videos last, last week, last month. I got a question. Um, can you answer a quick question for me? Sometimes I don't even talk to them, but they saw the video and I'm top of mind, top of mind. And they get back with me. That's awesome. So, so, so you've, you've done the Facebook, you've done the, you've done the inboxing, you've done the Facebook live videos or the videos in general. I know you've added some other production levels to them. They're certain look very good. Um, what's some, what's something else as far as, uh, I know you also put some content out or some text or, you know, pictures. What's some other things that you've done just to continue to get attention? Cause you don't seem like a hard sales, constant sales pitch because your audience would get turned off. They would, they would. Um, let's see. 
I will post timely things like if somebody, if, if there's been a, I don't try to use tragedies, but if, if yeah. something's kind of bad happened, I may do a little soft, little soft push about being covered. Something Absolutely. real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and you know what? It's something they can relate to. Everything's got, every, everybody got stuff going on in their life. And it's like, what's real? What's going on? And how can they relate to those real things? Or like you said, two months later, they're like, you know what? I'm in the situation that Thomas was talking about 30 days ago. Yes. I thought about him. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What's been your main focus? Final expense, term, life insurance in general? You know what? I, I, right now, I'm, I'm going to focus on just final expense. And if they have young adult children, which is what's been happening, their kids may want a policy, then I sell their kids a simplified issue term policy. I like it. I like it. Yep. Keep, keep it simple. It's easy. I love it. I love it. Simple. Very cool. So, so how's your experience been? There's, I, we get questions from agents, new agents all the time. You're at eight months, give or take a few days here and there. How, what's your experience been like as a new agent grinding it out? It's not an easy career. It's not. What's um, been your experience? My experience has been you have to have a plan every day. Even if it's just to call one or two people, you got to have a plan every oh, day. Oh, baby. <laughs> you got to be willing. You, you can't be a secret agent. I mean, if I go to the grocery store and I'm having a good conversation, I say, hey, by the way, who you got your life insurance with? Real quick. They're going to say, I don't have any or I got it. But I'm going to ask a question. I love it. I love it. You know what? And it's, it's being bold. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's getting outside of your comfort zone naturally. And you may be different. Naturally, I had to put some fears aside or overcome fears or get my <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, buddy. I appreciate that, bro. I, you know what? First video I ever did, I'm in the very office I've ever did a first video two and a half years ago, and I was so uncomfortable. You guys wouldn't believe how many takes there was, and agents are the same way. It's not natural for you to ask someone, hey, who's your life insurance with? It's not. But it's, it's not. just getting out of your comfort zone, having a plan, and what's cool is, you mentioned something awesome. If you have a plan, and you write something down, and this is what I'm gonna do today. You think about that all day. All day, I gotta get it done. I got to yeah. get it done. Yeah. And, and, and those things start to come into play, those opportunities start to come up, you start to think about your plan specifically. That's good, that's good. What else would you say um, experience-wise? What do you do when you've had those bad days, those bad weeks, because we've all had them. Man, you know what I do? I go to YouTube. I go to YouTube. I watch life insurance related videos. I watch a lot of your older videos. Thanks, buddy. Find some new pointers. I just stay, I stay, I stay plugged in into the system of life insurance because like only it. you, only you're going to understand what I'm going through. So I watch videos of guys in the actual business doing it. Absolutely. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. I appreciate that because, and agents, you can do one of two things when you're having a bad week. You can sulk, get depressed, go home and, and, and watch House of Cards. Or, <laughs> right. or you can plug in, you can get focused, you can figure out a way to overcome it and get out of that, uh, which is huge. I mean, you can tell just by talking to you, just by following you, you are someone that is dead set on being successful, which is one of the reasons I wanted you on our first, our first video podcast interview is you're a regular guy, you're a new agent, you're, you're, the, you're, you're, you're the insurance agent that everyone can learn from, but they can also relate to because you're that, you're that guy that's, you know what, I've been in the business eight months. It hasn't all been, it hasn't been all roses. It hasn't been easy, no but I've you found ways to be creative and see what's some other, without giving away, you know, all of your amazing secrets, what's some that's other creative things you've done? I'm cool. Well, this is what I'm doing. I just started this yesterday, man. Look, um, you know, the guy that I got in with, he, he, he teaches how to do seminars. Cool. I'm cold calling. I'm cold calling churches. I'll call a church and say, hey, you okay. know, um, do you have a table at your church where I can leave, leave some materials or maybe I can talk to a small group? Somebody going to say yes. I love that. You know? That's good. Yeah, I, I actually uh, my grandfather is a Baptist pastor in Arkansas. <laughs> Uh, I grew up in church my whole life, Christian schools, Bible college, all that. So I can relate. That, that's actually this is the creative thing. It's thinking outside the box and then taking action because everyone can come up with ideas to get in front of a church, but it's the execution. It's the bro. You gotta you gotta follow through. You gotta follow yeah. through. 
what's your pitch like when you cold call a church? What's kind of like your what's your pitch? It's brand new. I just I actually literally started yesterday. Okay, so okay. I haven't I, and it's, it was a Monday, so I got voicemails. But I've been saying, my name is Thomas. I'm looking for. Um, I would say, I would say I, I'm. Uh, I, I like to, who I need to speak to. Has yeah. allowed me to leave some materials about life insurance to the congregation and maybe speak to them. I asked for permission. And where can I? I didn't just say, "Hey, let me talk to them," because you know they're not going to let you just talk to they. they, they Absolutely. Yeah, you, you you got yourselves pitched down. You know what you're asking. You know you're asking for permission. You know you're asking. You know, and and uh, churches can relate to that because pastors, unfortunately, they have to preach a lot of funerals. You know, they have to hey. attend a lot of funerals. It's part of it. Mm -hmm. People pass away. Fortunate, but it's like there there wouldn't be a need for life insurance if that never happened. That'd be, I throw another thing in that I do. I haven't got much success with it, but it's, it's, it don't cost much money. I got some flyers made. I go to go to laundromats. I ask permission of the owner, and I just leave my flyers there. I mean, if it's on the way to somewhere else, what's, what's going to cost you two, three minutes to go drop off 30 flyers at a laundromat and move on to the next place? Yeah, and if you get a client out of it, you know, 30 days down the road or two weeks down the road, it's like it was worth two minutes. Exactly. The return was, you know, seven thousand, it fifty thousand dollars an hour. You know, something crazy because it took really? you thirty seconds to knock it down. You know, that's like, gee. Uh, any other thoughts? Anything else you want to share with agents that maybe are new? They're just getting started. They're listening to this. They're struggling. Whoever that agent is, you've got a chance to possibly impact another insurance agent's life right now. What would you say? I will tell you to focus, get three companies and focus on those three companies to learn the underwriting, learn the process, and don't be a secret agent. Let your friends and family know that's what you're doing. Because if you keep it a secret, you know, anonymity is the enemy. That's Grant Cardone saying. If, you, if you're anonymous, no one knows who you are, nobody's going to buy from you. So focus on three companies right. and let people know what you're doing. I love it. I love it, dude. Thank you. Thank you very much. You mentioned Greg Cardone. I was, I was actually at the 10X Growth Conference. Uh, oh, man. For a week. For a, that was a blast, man. I got, to, I, got, I got to hang out in the back and do a little roundtable meeting with Damon John. I got to hang out with a bunch of speakers. That was a blast, bro. That was cool. Bro. Yeah. It was too cool for me. Yeah, it was cool, but it was a lot of fun. You mentioned, you mentioned Grant Cardone. You mentioned how important has it been for you to find people to pattern your business after, to learn from those mentors in your life? Very important, man. It, it, it has saved me a lot of time of trying to, you know, muck around in the mud and stuff. It, it saved me some time to find some people yeah. and just practice it, get the feedback, and make adjustments to make it work for me, for my personality. Exactly, exactly. Hey, if they're watching, buddy, uh, and, and they want to follow you, they want to reach out, how can they do that? Um, you can find me on Facebook at um, Acadian Insurance Group, or you can just hit me up, Thomas Dixon. Well, Thomas Sales Life Insurance. That's my business page. Ah, I like that. <laughs> I don't have to follow that one. I don't follow that one. That's good. Dude, it's thinking outside the box. It's in your, it's in your freaking profile name. You know, it's like, dude, when I remember, when I think about life insurance six months from now, I'm going to remember Thomas Sells Life Insurance. Absolutely. I love it, dude. <laughs> Thanks for being on the first video podcast series. Many, many more to come. Awesome job. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for reaching out to me, man. And I'm glad to come on this, on this uh, podcast and, and um, go back and forth with you with some good news. You got it, bro. Have an awesome 2018. Thanks for being on. Appreciate you, buddy. All right. You too, man. Take care.